g'day, welcome to Farming Live Australia. Today I'm going to put our new cement mixer together and see how it works. We bought it from Townsville from a man's toy shop and it cost $1,357. We had another cement mixer until a couple of years ago and it got too old and wore out. And it was just a conventional brickish type cement mixer. You know, you mixed it up at one spot. You put it in the wheelbarrow, wheeled it over to the job and tipped it and did it that way. The trouble with that was with the rough uneven ground on the farm, as I got older it got very difficult for me to wheel a full wheelbarrow full of cement. I realised that I won't be able to drive the tractor over the formwork and that I'm going to need to use the barrow to wheel at a short distance. At least I can get it close to the job with the tractor and then the wheelbarrow should be fairly easy to put it in there as long as I don't put too much in it at one time. So this is a cement mixer still in the van you can see it's got the PTO shaft and stuff there. The next step will be to read the book and try and figure out what I have to do. instructions and the first thing it says you have to do is to put it onto the three-point linkage of the tractor so it's nice and stable so that'll be the first thing to do. Where the three-point linkage goes on I notice the bolts are here are loose. I'll have to check all the bolts because I notice a lot of bolts that are on it are just together finger tight but they haven't really tightened anything up or put any Loctite on anything or anything like that so I'm going to have to go right through it and check all that. This is locking inside the drum and even the bolts that hold the drum on are only just loose, they're not done up. See, you can see this one here. They put them in but, you know, it's obvious you've got to go right through the machine and check it all. Now I've got the bottom linkages of the three point linkage hooked to the tractor and onto the cement mixer. The next thing I'll have to do is work out how the hydraulic top link works. We've got the top link on now. The weight of the mix has pulled the ram here out. So what I need to do now is to hook on here the hydraulic hose and hook it to the tractor's hydraulic power takeoff and then that should be able to lift it up when the tractor's started. I've worked out which way the hose is going to go. They give you two sorts of fittings for the end of the hose, a female and a male, and it's got a female on it, so we need to change that over to a male. Okay, so this is the one we need, and this is the one that it had. And I don't mind getting a spare female coupler because they cost a few bucks, so I'll be happy about that. So what I'll do now is put the male coupler on and we should be right to go. This is what I'm going to use to seal the hydraulic fitting and I know it says flange sealant but I find it really good on diesel fuel leaks and hydraulic fittings. I've got the sealant on the thread now and I'm just going to put this one on and what I'll do is tighten that up with a spanner. I've done the fitting up nice and tight and it's now time to test it and see if it works. I started the tractor and engaged the hydraulics and it all works but the top link is too long. It needs shortening so I'm going to have to take that piece out. You can see here I've removed the adjuster piece entirely. It must be for tractors with much longer bottom linkage arms. The mixer is currently in the tip position and now getting raised to the mix position. As well as being able to tip the mixer, you can also raise it with the three-point linkage. That would help you a lot if you had to get into something higher like a barrow, etc. This is the PTO shaft that comes from the tractor power takeoff. 
onto the cement mixer. And I've measured the distance between the tractor and the cement mixer and at 600 millimetres is the maximum that it can be when it's fully closed up, which that is. And if you look here, you can see that this is just under 700 millimetres, so it's too long. And they talk in the instructions about cutting the shaft if it's too long and how to do it. So I'm going to have to cut this shaft shorter. It's actually quite a good unit. That's the end that goes on the tractor and you, you depress this thing here and that lets you put it on and holds it on. It's got a grease nipple to grease the universal joint and it also on this end, the end that goes on the cement mixer has a universal and a grease nipple as well and through that hole there a shear pin goes in case you overload it so the pin can shear rather than smash something. This needs nearly a hundred millimetres off at about 95. If you look now you can see that that's about level with the end of the tape and with this level with the end of the tape here it's right on 600 so that should be right now. Yep, all done. Okay. I haven't got time to mix up a load of cement this afternoon, so what I thought I'd do is just put sand in it and see how it looked to mix and how much it held. My old mixer, I think, held 21 shovelfuls. I put 30 in this one and it looked like it would hold more yet with water and cement, so it's a lot bigger than my old mixer. I think it's doing a good job of mixing. It looks to be really thorough. I think it'll be really good. One thing they warn you about when you're tipping is to make sure that the angle of the universals isn't too bent when it's going around otherwise it might destroy them but it's almost straight it's actually better than when it's mixing well that's the cement mixer she works really good a lot of nuts and bolts thanks a lot for watching this edition of farming life australia we'll see you next time